Here are seven NBA players that need a comeback season. They have something to prove and they need to do well this season in order to help their future career pan out in the NBA. Now, firstly, before I get started with the video, if I sound a little bit hazy and a little bit croaky, I've been sick for the last few days. It was also my birthday week, so I was celebrating my birthday, which is why I didn't have any videos out. So yeah, I turned 20 years old, which is just insane. Don't even really feel like a 20 year old, but I turned 20, so that's kind of crazy. Obviously, it was so annoying being sick on my birthday. I lost my voice, which was just, yeah, really annoying, but couldn't really do anything. So every day that I wasn't posting, though, I was like thinking about videos. So I've got a few coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoy these videos, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new and let's get into the video. And also, this is not in order, but it is a list of seven players who were either on their last hope or need to show why they can still produce at an NBA level, or even just to stay in the league. At number seven, Andrew Wiggins. Yes, this is a guy, six foot eight, first overall pick, shooting guard, small forward. A guy that was drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers, then traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves in exchange for Kevin Love. The Minnesota Timberwolves saw him as being their star player in the future, and then they drafted Carl Anthony Towns, which meant they would have a dynamic duo in the future, but it just hasn't really worked out. Not to mention Zach Levine and Chris Dunn, but we won't talk about those two. In saying that, when Andrew Wiggins was just 21 years old, he averaged 23.6 points, 4 rebounds, 2.3 assists, one steal, shooting 76% from the free throw line, 45% from field goal, and 35% from three, which is definitely a solid stat line for a guy that was only 21 years old. The good thing about Wiggins is that he's definitely not injury prone. He's played 82 games in his first year, 81 in his second, 82 in his third, 82 in his fourth, and 73 this season. Which means that for a guy who averages 36 minutes per game his entire career, the only problem is he's really having a downward spiral. Going from 23.6 points to 17.7 points was a huge decline from 21 years old to 22 years old. Some attribute that to what Jimmy Butler brought to the Minnesota Timberwolves, but others just say, you know what, Wiggins has just been a disappointment. And when you look at it, in games without Jimmy Butler, Andrew Wiggins helped fill the void that the Timberwolves needed. He averaged almost 22 points per game on 48% shooting and 32% shooting from beyond the arc. But this was when Jimmy Butler didn't play, but was still on the team. So that kind of made us believe that if Jimmy Butler gets traded, Andrew Wiggins will take that next step. Well, he didn't exactly do that. He kind of just stayed the same and plateaued even with Jimmy Butler off the team. In saying that, now he has a full offseason, he has the potential to improve on his game a little bit more. He's only 23 years old heading into next season. I believe he can definitely be a good player in this league and actually take the next step to be an all-star caliber player. If he was in the Eastern Conference, I would say he would be an all-star caliber player. But unfortunately, in the stacked Western Conference, with guys like Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, LeBron James, James Harden all at his position, it will be tough for him to make an all-star team. Push him back to what he did at 21 years old. Almost averaging 24 points per game, shooting 35% from the three. We've seen it before. That's the thing. We have seen what he can produce on the floor at such a young age. So it's not out of this world to say that, yeah, he could be an all-star caliber player and he could average around 25 points per game because he almost averaged 24. So whilst he has been a disappointment on both the offensive and defensive floor, he can still improve on his game as he is still so young. But if he doesn't, this is his last hope to be an all-star player in the league and to not be named a bust. And yeah, it almost seems a little bit weird to name a 20-point scorer as a bust, but he was the first overall pick that was projected to be a star player in this league, and he definitely hasn't lived up to that. But I do not cancel him out like a lot of other people have, and I do believe that he can have a bounce back season. Number six, Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith Jr. was a top 10 pick. In 2017, he was selected ninth overall by the Dallas Mavericks. He's a guy that came into the league with crazy athleticism. And when you look at his high school mixtapes and his college mixtapes, and even what he's done in the dunk contest, he is like that. His athleticism is off the charts. Unfortunately, he hasn't been amazing in the NBA. He's only really averaged around 14 and a half points through his entire career and around five assists. 
but he's only 21 years old. And I believe that any player who gets traded at such a young age, it's going to take time for them to improve and time for them to settle in. And obviously in New York, he's had some up and down moments. Obviously being traded there, he was happy about that because he wanted to prove the Dallas Mavericks why they should have kept him. But then when he got to New York, we looked at his three point percentage. He averaged 28% from three, which is pretty bad. His free throw percentage was a shocking 56%. He only averaged around five and a half assists and 14.7 points in around 28.6 minutes per game, which isn't very good considering that with 28.6 minutes per game, you should at least be averaging a few more points, a few more assists, and definitely be able to play a little bit better on the defensive end, considering how athletic he truly is. Obviously, in his first season in the league, he averaged 15.2 points per game and 5.2 assists per game, which is actually pretty solid for a rookie. Ever since then, he's just declined, which tells me that he needs to have a bounce back season and actually elevate his game to the next level. Not to be an all-star player or anything like that, but just to be a solid player. I believe pairing him up with a guy like Julius Randle and RJ Barrett will give him some more options to work with than he had in Dallas and even last season in New York. But if he doesn't, a top 10 pick averaging around 14 points per game and 5 rebounds, shooting a horrible field goal, 3 throw and 3 point percentage is something that the New York Knicks won't look to move forward with. They want to get some free agents and we know that about them in the future of 2021 that if Dennis Smith Jr. doesn't improve his game, he may be off the team by 2021 when some bigger free agents become available. Number 3, Dwight Howard. This one is also pretty hard to talk about because as of now, Dwight Howard is on the Memphis Grizzlies but they don't plan to play him. So either he's going to get waived or traded. And at this point, we don't even know if he'll be on an NBA team. But it is really hard to assume that he won't be on an NBA team next season because I do believe he isn't like a Carmelo Anthony or an Amari Stoudemire or a Monte Ellis who wants to come back into the league but may not find a fit. I believe that Dwight Howard can be a fit on a lot of contending teams who need a center. And if a center does go down for any team in the league, I believe that Dwight Howard would be on an NBA team next season. So we're going to put him on the list. Throughout his career, despite what people say, he actually has been very, very injury free. For the first seven years of his career, he only missed eight games total. And he was averaging over 35 minutes per game in all of those years, apart from his rookie season, which is legitimately insane. Then throughout the next seven years, while he has been a little bit more injured, he hasn't had any significant injuries apart from in LA, but he played through the injury and still played 76 games for that season. And then obviously last season in Washington when he only played nine games. In those nine games though, he did average 13 points and nine rebounds. And the year before that, he averaged 16 and a half points and 12 and a half rebounds with 1.6 blocks per game. So this is a guy that can definitely play and I believe he still has the potential to be a solid player in the league if he's just given a chance. But at this point, this may just be his last leg in the NBA. At number 4, Jabari Parker. Jabari Parker is similar to Andrew Wiggins, where he actually entered the league as a top 3 pick, second overall and drafted by the Bucks. And he also entered the league having a very solid stat line and then decreasing. In his third ever season, at 21 years old, he averaged 20 points, 6 rebounds, shooting 74% from the free throw line, 49% from field goal, and 36% from the three point line. At 21 years of age, he looked like the next and upcoming star in this league. 21 years of age, averaging 20 points per game and 6 rebounds, that's actually very, very solid. Unfortunately for him, injuries have really not been kind to him. He's had a lot of injuries and he suffered an injury when he first entered the league and ever since then he's continued to have a few injuries and nagging injuries here and there. In his second year he managed to play 76 and then 51 but ever since then he's really decreased and so of his minutes and obviously now he is on a new team. He's playing on a team with young talent with the Atlanta Hawks, Trey Young, John Collins, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, Kevin Herter, Bruno Fernando, like these guys are all really young and so is Jabari Parker. Jabari is still only 23 years old but in saying that he needs to show why he can still play in this league and why he was a 20 point scorer and why he was the second overall pick coming out of college. 
He is on his last hope because we know what he could be in this league. We've seen it before. Just like Andrew Wiggins, we know he was a top pick. We know he was a 20 point scorer. And we know what he could do in the league when he was healthy. Now we need to just put it all together, see what he can do in Atlanta. And if he can, he will be a very solid player in the league. Not all star level, but just a solid player. But if he cannot, he may be one of those guys that turns into a bust once again. A top two overall pick that really hasn't produced anything in the league. Simply you can say it was to do with injury or you can say that it was just terrible luck. This may be also his last hope to be a sole contributor as a starting player in the league. At number five, Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier is not a young player. He's 26 years old and he will now lead a Charlotte Hornets team. Yeah, he is leading this team. And number one, I don't think the Charlotte Hornets will be a good team. Number two, he is replacing Kemba Walker, which has been the Charlotte Hornets best player for many, many seasons. In fact, since he got drafted to the Bobcats. And I believe that Terry Rozier is in for a rough season. But I do believe that even despite the contract that they paid him, he can be a solid player, especially on a bad team with literally nobody else. The stats that he possessed while in Boston don't really reflect how good he really is. He's bound to have an increase in his stats and production, but as a whole, if he doesn't do this and he just plateaus as a player in Charlotte, this may affect his potential as being a future starting point guard in the league, which he has wanted his entire career. But if he cannot advance his game, this may be the end of Terry Rozier and his future as a starting point guard in the NBA. At the end of the day, I believe that this is a make or break season for Terry Rozier because all the pressure's on him. Number two, DeMarcus Cousins. This is a guy that was once seen as the best center in the entire league. In fact, that was literally before he tore his Achilles just two seasons ago. His last season, before joining the Warriors, he was seen as the greatest big man in the league. And it's fair enough. 25 points, 13 rebounds, 1.6 steals, 1.6 blocks. He was insane. A guy that could not be stopped alongside Anthony Davis. And he is playing with Anthony Davis. But now... He barely could find a team that would take him on. He couldn't find a team that would pay him. And when he signed with the Golden State Warriors, people assumed that he made a bitch move and just signed with the Warriors because he wanted a ring. But he came out and said that literally no team wanted him and the Warriors were the only team that actually wanted him. Everybody just kind of shrugged it off, but maybe it was true. Because this season, he's on a lesser contract than the $5 million the Warriors paid him. He's on a $3.5 million contract when guys like Dwayne Dedman signed a three-year $41 million contract. Like this shows that the market for DeMarcus Cousins was literally non-existent. With a guy of his size, so big and so heavy, even though he looks very slim and fit, this is his last hope in the league. He needs to stay healthy to ensure he can still be a solo contributor for any NBA team and get his money that he deserves. Secondly, to still actually produce at an NBA level, I believe that this is a make or break season for DeMarcus Cousins. Not necessarily that if he has a terrible season, he'll get kicked out of the league like Dwight Howard or some other guys like Melo. For a guy who was once insured of a max contract before his Achilles injury, he needs to just have a bounce back and injury for a year to stay as a solid starting center in the league. And if he can, I believe he still has the potential to be the best center in the league once again. Number one, Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz was drafted in the year of 2017, first overall. He's six foot four, which is a pretty tall point guard. He has moved a little bit around to the shooting guard, but in previous years, alongside Ben Simmons at the 76ers, he played off him, but he also didn't play a lot. He's a guy that was elite in high school and in college. He was a five-star recruit, and obviously he was a great college player as he got drafted first overall. People assumed that the 76ers would have the craziest future big three in Markel Folds, Ben Simmons, and Joel Embiid. That was not the case. For a guy that's only played 33 games his entire career and has been injured, and then there's been reports that he's had mental issues where his shot mechanic is off, but it's not his actual shot mechanic or his shoulder or his elbow, it's all inside his head. 
This is something that we haven't really seen before. He's obviously making progress on his rehab, but there's no timetable and there never has been a timetable and this has left many questions surrounding Markel Fultz and his future in the NBA. He's only played 33 games and averaged 20 minutes. But we all remember the game in Philly where he got a triple-double and it just brought back memories of what Fultz could be in the league if he could string some games together and actually play. Now he's part of the Orlando Magic. And this could be huge for the Magic. They've got young guys like Mo Bamba, Aaron Gordon, Jonathan Isaac, who I was so high on when he actually entered the league. If you can pair Markel Fultz with a young core of Aaron Gordon, Mo Bamba, Jonathan Isaac, even if you didn't have Vuz, Fournier, Terrence Ross, Augustine, just including this young core, if Fultz can play anywhere near the way he played entering the league, Mo Bamba can put on some size, Jonathan Isaac can take that next step, this is still a young core that can be very scary in an Eastern Conference if they can string some games together and get some chemistry. In saying that, if he cannot get back to how he played, and if we can see that his shooting mechanics and his shoulder injury is more serious and is career threatening, then Fultz may be out of the league before we know it, which will just be devastating and he will go down as one of the biggest busts in NBA history, which is just unfortunate because like Greg Oden, it wasn't his fault. It's just the way that his injuries happened to ruin his career. With that said, if you guys enjoyed this video, it was a little bit of a long one. I'd appreciate it if you guys could drop a like, subscribe if you're new. Be sure to hit the notification button so you don't miss an upload. Follow me on Instagram to stay up to date to see what I get up to in my personal life. And with that said, I am out. Peace.